coming up. When I was on the JUTC board um, at the time, Douglas Chambers was the the um, chairman, and he was he was murdered. Hey everyone, this week on the Trailblazers, we have well-known businessman Dennis Chung, who serves in various capacities, both in the public and the private sector. He's also the CEO at Supreme Ventures Services Limited. Stay tuned to hear not only a bit of his story, but also some brutally honest, sound business advice that you can use right now. By the way, want to get clean and clear skin? Then click the link in the description box of this episode and visit Carewiz Beauty for all your skincare needs. All Trailblazers will get 5% off every purchase. Plus, want to lose weight, get in shape, or just to focus on your health and nutrition? Then contact DG's Nutrition and Wellness Center. Their contact details are listed in the description box of this episode. When you reach out to them, just tell them that Tamara from the Trailblazers sent you. What's your word to them? I would say to fight. Fight for your dreams. Fight for your purpose. Life that inspires you. That motor that you aspire to be. Right? Uh, in my humble opinion, is become very comfortable with yourself. Very important. You know, the saying in Jamaica, one hand can't clap. You forgive yourself for allowing people to mistreat you. Disciplines that we need to embody. You just have to work at it and be committed to everyone. And it's scary to have all of that fall away from you. And you have to celebrate those wins. Work with Christ. fitness clients. For guidance, rely on Christ for support. And no rush. I did it. I, I made my move into entrepreneurship at 40. Um, so chicken, so scared. That when what, you know, last comments would you want to share with you? You have your core values. You do the right things. It'll fall in place for you. Dennis Chung is a well-respected business leader who is currently the Chief Executive Officer at Supreme Ventures Limited, formerly Chief Financial Officer at Supreme Ventures Limited. He was previously CEO of the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica and serves on numerous public and private sector boards, including as current Chairman of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA. He's also an author and an avid recreational cyclist. This business guru and a trailblazer gets up close and personal in this week's episode. Hi, Dennis. It is a pleasure to have you joining us on the Trailblazers. And I see you're relaxing, you know, on the beach at the seaside. <laughs> My pleasure to be here. I actually love this background. You know, I, I, learned, I learned how to, to put it on. So, you know. <laughs> As well. I, would, I wish I was there right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. So how are you? We haven't spoken in a while. Eh? It has been a while indeed. But I know I've seen you doing amazing things. And, you know, that's one of the reasons I reached out to you because I felt that you were most fitting to be on the program to share with our viewers. Yeah. You are a well-known businessman, a well-known, you're known across Jamaica in business, in just, you know, as a thought leader. And you wear so many different caps. I mentioned some of those earlier in my introduction. So tell us about Dennis, about your story. What was that like? Did you always know you were going to be a businessman? Well, I always knew I was going to be an accountant. Um, I, I actually, my father was an accountant, right? He passed away last year, um, but he was an accountant and he always influenced me in that way. Um, so, I recall, I mean, when I went to Jamaica College, I mean, definitely, you know, you just went into accounting because it was natural, um, you know, so I went into the business side. And when I was in third form at 13 years old, he took me up to UAE and he said to me, this is where you will come and do your accounting degree and your master's in accounting when you leave JC. So, for me, it was always expected that when I left JC, I would go and do my accounting degree there um, and also do my master's degree before I started working, right? It was an expectation um, and it turned out to be a very good thing. I actually loved accounts. 
uh, I guess because the influence of my father. And um, I recall when once when I was in grade four, um, um, grade, sorry, form four, fourth form, not grade four. <laughs> and, um, you know, he brought me this book. Um, the, the, the famous accounting book at the time was Frank Wood. And um, I had a problem. He's an accountant. I had a problem. And he said to, I said to him, can you help me with this? And he said, um, did I buy the book for you? And I said, yes. And he said, well, go and read it and figure it out. Wow. And, you know, I never asked anybody anything again after that to help me with something. I always try to figure it out. And I think that's where my thinking came from. That's interesting. So in yeah. that sense, then, had it not been cut for your dad, you perhaps would have, do you think you would have gone into a different direction had it not been for his influence? I don't know, maybe law. Maybe I'd have gone into law um, because I did love, I mean, I, was, I, I always talked a lot, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and I loved like um, Perry Mason and, you know, those, those shows, you know, I loved, I loved that side of it. But his influence, I think, drove me into account because even when I was in at UA, he used to take me to all of the, accounting seminars that the Institute of Chartered Accountants used to take on, put on. Wow. You know? So I was just influenced that way. Okay, awesome. So you studied accounting and then at what point now you ventured into the different businesses that you've been working with the different organizations and also operating your own thing as well? Well, well it's accounting, eh? So um, one thing I always say to people is that accounting actually it, it is a lifeblood of an organization it is like the blood that flows through the, the body so once you're an accountant you see everything that happens in the organization so naturally um you know one of the things i learned and one of the things that i, I did very early was i got attracted to flow charting and process flowing and technology right and that combination with accounting, I think, helps you to, to think about things critically. You know, because when you talk about flowchart and you're thinking about how processes work, you know, and it, it helped me because I was really attracted to it. And once you understand the, the, the technology and the accounting side, then you find out that all businesses are the same thing, right, underneath. It's like cars. All cars operate the same way. They just look differently and that's the same thing with our business all businesses operate the same way all of them are unless you're talking about a public sector versus a private sector where one is for profit and one is not for profit but essentially they all operate with the objective of um of you know having records um and managing the the resources that they have to meet that objective so it's not difficult, I think, to switch between each other. Or what you need to know to do that, to, to really do it successfully, is you know, just learn the peculiarities of the business. But I think all of them operate the same way. Yes, that is so true. And I like the analogy that you use in terms of the cars as well. But in terms of the private and the public, you've had the best of both worlds. You still have the best of both worlds yeah. because you serve in public sector as well as in private sector in various capacities. So do you find that challenging or it's, it's smooth sailing on both ends? No, I think governance is governance, you know. Um, so the same principles you apply to the private sector company is the same principle you apply to the public sector company. The problem that we've had in this country is that um, we've not really applied proper governance in the public sector in many respects, but it's the same governance. I mean, corporate governance in the private sector is the same as corporate governance in the public sector, right? And this is why it wasn't difficult for us at NSWMA to actually walk away with um, corporate governance prizes um, for the second year, because we did it last year also, even though in 2015 it was seen as one of the most corrupt organizations in Jamaica because we just went in and we applied 
the, the fundamental principles of good governance to it. That's all we did, you wow. know. And it clearly has been working. But just zooming in, in terms of your personal journey, Dennis, for you, after you left university, was it like a smooth transition to the various entities that you worked? Tell us about that. Like, what was that like for you? Yeah, well, I, I worked at a few places. I started working at Pricewaterhouse, right, where I was working before even um, leaving UA, right? I used to go there for the summer and work there. Um, and I worked at IBM um, when it was a, a really big company in Jamaica. Um, I actually did a small stint at Derrick Bunting and Golding, right? Um, and I worked in the food industry. I worked at um, restaurants at Jamaica, KFC and Pizza Hut. Um, and then I went to JMB, right? Um, I was at PSOJ and then um, to, to SVL, you know? Um, so it, it was a... It, it, I think it helped me. I mean, a lot of people stay at one place for a very long time, but what they don't get to see is the different perspectives, right? So it helps me personally also, because I know how businesses operate. So therefore, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm buying stocks, for example, on the stock market, I can look at it and know, you know, what is happening in certain companies, you know, and being on, being on the various boards, also helps to give you a perspective that when you apply it to um, the business that you work in, it actually helps, yes. you know, because you get to see so many different perspectives. I mean, when somebody works at an institution for all their life, they don't get to see all of that. You know, it's like traveling the world. If you always go to the United States, they never know what's happening in the rest of the world. You know, so it, it does help. And, you know, I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, for the most part, you know, um, I, I cannot say that my life has been difficult. You know, many people can come and say, boy, the life has been difficult. I, I can't say that. You know, I had um, good support from my, from my father, from my parents, you know, and um, they tra helped me transition to working. And I, I actually like what you just mentioned in terms of the fact that working at these various companies and entities and serving on these different boards really helped in terms of giving you that difference in perspectives because sometimes people will feel like you are not, not that you are not stable because you're well accomplished, but persons who change careers or change jobs then frequently may not be as stable as opposed to someone who you know, stays as a company 20 years or 30 years. But the world has changed and has evolved. So, you know, it, I don't see anything wrong with that. Dennis, you are no doubt well respected in the business fraternity and in other sectors as well. But and one of the things I wanted to ask of you is, from all that you have learned over the years, what has been, you know, the greatest business advice that you have received? Um, you know, when I was... I was in about 1997, I was on the Betting Gaming and Lotteries Commission. I was actually appointed, appointed there by Dr. Davies at the time. Um, and that was a while ago. In fact, I was on the commission that actually gave Supreme Ventures their license. Wow. Yeah, Supreme Ventures. Um, and you know, one thing I've always used from that that has guided me, I mean, Mike Surge, I don't know if you remember, Mike Surge was the head of the Revenue Protection Division. He was actually on the commission at the time. Um, we had Bonnie Goodison, who is someone I know well now, even up to now, um, and Gordon Robinson was the chairman. Janice Allen, who is a senator, recently appointed, was also on the commission. Okay. Right? Yeah. And um, Gordon Robinson, who was chairman, um, because in those days, a lot of people, I mean, gam the, the gaming industry is not one of the, the, the um, most ethical industries eh? um, in terms of some of the players at the time. And Gordon Robinson was chairman said to me, he said to us that guys, before we do anything wrong, we will go back to eating bun and cheese for the rest of our lives. Wow. And that was a very powerful thing for me, right? And it helped to define 
um, the way I think a lot because it means that you know your, your personal ethics, your personal credibility is much more important than than any material thing out there, which is what I see a lot of young people they they don't understand that that personal integrity is the most important thing. You can get back a car, you can get back a house, but once you lose that integrity, you're not going to get it back. And I think that is what has guided me all this time. Well, I really respect that. And integrity, no doubt, is super important. And you are right, uh, especially as young people, like, you know, we're in an age where we want everything instant and we want to get rich quick and all of that. So I really do appreciate that. All right. So the next thing I also wanted to find out from you uh, is in terms of your journey because I know you mentioned you've not had a rough life but I'm sure as a CEO and also just as a business leader over the years you have had challenges what would you say has been maybe one or two of your greatest challenges and how do you how did you deal with that well you know um I I, I don't I, I haven't I haven't had a lot of challenges to be honest with you um, because I don't really look at challenges as, as issues, as problems. I see them as maybe just a, another, another chapter, you know, and opportunities disguised as challenges, you know. Um, maybe, maybe one of the ones that stood out the most and was in the public sphere was when I was on the JUTC board um, at the time, Douglas Chambers was the, the um, chairman and he was, he was murdered. Um, and um, an audit was done by the contractor general at the time, which the report came out that suggested that there was some criminal activity on the board, basically, that things were not done properly. And you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's amazing how people and in Jamaica just, I guess it's all over the world, they just, they just jump at the thing that is said publicly, you know. And um, I mean, it affected me somehow, but it affected one other person even more um, at the time who has been the sangsan. It cast a serious shadow over him for two years. And, you know, at the end of the whole investigation, um, I remember a policeman who is a senior policeman now, he came to interview me, um, following up on the recommendation for the criminal, um, the, the criminal investigation into Bindley. And he said to me, the first time, this is the second time I ever spoke to him. And he said to me, he said, you know, Mr. Chung, I've interviewed over 700 persons and none of them um corroborates what was written in the report right and it was a challenging time for those two years but in the end you know um i think the whole thing of our integrity that we served it stood up um and I, I recall the dpp actually wrote a report at the time also and basically agreed with what the policeman had said right um so it was a challenge, but it wasn't really something that um, I think got me down because I, during the time you still work, you know, you still try to move forward. I mean, and I think once you know that you've done the right thing, you know, then, then those things don't really bother you, you know, but that, that, that is what I would say was the most challenging thing. I mean, I, I really, I, to be honest, as I say, I really haven't had a lot of challenges. Yes. And, and I like how you mentioned that, how you view challenges, because what another person may view as a challenge, as you mentioned, you, you just feel like it is something else to be, to be dealt with as part of your job or as part of the work. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and that's it. I mean, you, you, the way you look at things is going to determine what happens to you, because I always say, you know, I mean, if you, uh, you know, as I always say to people, if something is a problem and it has a solution, then it's not a problem because it has a solution. And if it's a problem and there is no solution, there's not a problem either because you just can't solve it and you move on. Yes. You know? I so I, like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get any gray years over something like that. 
Definitely. All right. So, Dennis, as a voice for the business community, I know many are dealing with the impact of COVID-19, and that's right across from the micro to the you know, medium-sized enterprises to the large enterprises. So what's your advice in terms of how is it that they deal with the impact of COVID-19 and not only just for business leaders, but just, just about anybody, but I speak specifically to business leaders because you are yeah. in that community in terms of bouncing back and moving forward. Well, the first thing is that you have to take a really hard look an analysis on your business or your personal life, right? Um, and you know, the truth is that it's situations like these that you always encourage people to save for, you know, right? So, um, you know, I mean, when things are good, I always say to people that the best time to save is when things are good. Because if things are bad, you can't save, logically. So you save during that time and make sure that you can put aside money that you can, you can live consistently. Um, but what I would say is put, just do an analysis of your personal situation, whether it's a business or personally. And once you do that analysis, then you can, you, 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 you can have a better idea of how to move forward. Sometimes it is that, boy, listen, this thing, I don't see how it's going to work out in us. So I'm going to put a hole on it. Or on a personal point of view, or even with a business, you say, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to go and talk to the bank. Talk to the bank before the bank talk to you. You know? Or if you have assets that are not really needed, you know, get rid of the assets and create some liquidity. You know? But what you need to do is do that analysis. And then once you do that analysis, then you determine an immediate plan to survive. Because if you're not able to survive initially, then you can't plan long-term. So you have to do that. And then after that, you put something in place to either ride out what's happening if, if you can't do it any other way. Because, for example, in the entertainment industry, everything is totally gone. Or you pivot, you change, you, you do something else, you know. Um, you, you, you seek professional help that can do it. Businesses, for example, can, I mean, one of the products that we launched at Supreme Venture Services Limited is called the Business Hub, right, where we offer our back-end services to small and medium-sized, basically medium-sized business. And, you know, when we're saying look at options like those so that you can reduce the cost of your business while I'm while at the same time moving forward. So individuals, for example, look at your personal costs and see how you can rationalize it the best possible, you know, because there are always going to be discretionary income in there. Definitely. I, we certainly appreciate, the, you know, those tips, those advice. And the other thing that I wanted to mention, I mean, this is a more personal development program, not a financial program, but since you're giving some tips there in terms of, you know, savings and so forth, what would you say is a good, you know, perhaps your number one investment tip at this time? No, it's a time that offers great opportunities, right? What you have to do is just find the opportunities, but opportunities always are greatest when there's the greatest turmoil, right? So that initially, when the pandemic hit, for example, people would rush and they would sell off good shares, right? You should be looking at the shares that are going to do well after the pandemic. Don't invest for tomorrow, you know? And, and, and similarly, in your personal life, don't think about doing something for tomorrow, you know, but long term. So, I mean, I think people should have been looking at stocks. I certainly have been looking at stocks from a while, yeah, looking at investments that's gonna take off after COVID is done. Because after COVID is done, people are going to go back to their normal activities. People are gonna want a vacation. People are still gonna eat. People are gonna want a party. Economic activity is gonna come back. So look for those things. I mean, look for the opportunities. And I always say to people, don't focus on the negatives. So the negatives, oh, you know, everything is not going good and I have to stay home and lock down and watch Netflix and no. 
opportunities are being created out there. Oh, that is so true. Yeah. I really like that to emphasize that, that opportunities are there. So you would advise persons then that they just need to go in search of those opportunities that are there, right? Talk to a stockbroker, talk to somebody who knows, you know, um, have conversations about it, right? And, and just seek out opportunities, you know, so that you can benefit. Definitely. And separate from, from, from the investment side, in terms of the business opportunities that are there, what are some of the top business opportunities that you believe that any person, whether young or old, or anybody who's just trying to get on their feet that they need to look into at this time? Well, you know, look at what people are going to demand, you know. Um, so people are going to come back strong for tourism. I think tourism is going to come back strong next year. Um, people are going to want to have, get into social activities, you know. Um, there's going to be a change, I think, in how people think because of the pandemic. So find things that, that um, you know, people would want coming out of that change you know there's there's going to be some more use of digital platform i don't think the, the rush that people think is going to happen because naturally people want to socialize right but i think that's going to happen there's going to be opportunity in manufacturing those things that people want also i mean i can't say specifically what it is i mean it depends on the market you're going at you know and you know as i always say find the passion that you believe in and and do some business in that because once you're doing once you're passionate about something you'll do well in it i definitely agree with that all right so we've been talking a bit in, in terms of the personal development and career advice but just to zoom in back on you personally you know dennis who are, i know you spoke of your dad and his him being a big influence in your life growing up who or what inspires you is he your big inspiration or you also get inspiration from other sources you know, I mean, he was a, a huge inspiration, right? Um, but there, there are people I look at along the way. You know, like I remember when I was 15 years old, him giving me a book um, called Ayakoka, Lee Ayakoka, who turned around Chrysler. And I read that book and I was so inspired by Ayakoka, you know, when I was 15. Um, there, there are certain people locally who I, who I, you know, who I learned from and look up to. I mean, Dennis Leila, for example, is someone I've always, you know, um, um, he has been my mentor in many respects. Um, I, I remember when I was at the PSOJ, you know, people like Butch, um, Butch Hendrickson, you know, who talked very well. He was um, at Trailblazers last year. <laughs> Yeah, and, and Butch is someone who, when I went to NSL with me, Butch came on the board with me and supported me, yeah. you know. Um, people like him, people like um, Butch Stewart. I remember once I went to see Butch Stewart for 10 minutes and ended up talking to him for two hours. Oh, wow. You know, uh, Billy McConnell, you know, was someone who always used to stop in and talk to me and give me advice at the PSO. So there are many people. You know, I look at the various characteristics that people have and I try and emulate those things and, and, and take comfort in talking to them. Because when you talk to these guys, you get a lot of knowledge and inspiration, you know. Um, so those are the people. But really, I'm sure my father did inspire me, yeah. you know. Um, one of my uncles also, right? He always told me, he told me when I was, when I was about 16, um, he had a gas station. I used to go out there and work in the summer. He said, listen, Dennis, it's not how much you earn that's important, but how much you save. Yes. Right? So things like that. Mm -hmm. You know? That is um, so true. Continue. You know, um, I remember when I was a young Kiwanian, I don't know if you know Las Lewis, who was the head of Jamal. He was the chairman of Jamal. I'm, and I'm, last, I'm still young, young, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> and last said to me, when I went into Kiwan, I introduced a friend of mine who was very proud of, was a manager somewhere. And I introduced him as the manager of this place, you know. And last said to me, he said, young man, when you introduce someone to me, tell me who the person is. Because when the title is gone, the man is left. Mm -hmm. 
so I want to know the man, right? So those things start, uh, you know, over the years, you pick it up, you know, and you use it to define you. So there is no single person that inspires, but the, 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 the characteristics and the traits from all these people, you know, has, has helped me to define myself. I do really like that. And I mean, for somebody like yourself then, is it that life now sort of happens automatically for you to, you know, continue day after day or have you had moments where you felt like giving up? Have you ever had any of those moments? Um, not really, because I'm always motivated to improve something and to try something new you know um so i remember i mean my my stint at ns of me I, I was appointed by porsche simpson made and reappointed by um wholeness it's not the first time i remember i was at jamaica ultimate tire company which is a subsidiary of jutc and i was appointed at the time by mike henry and reappointed by omar davis because we had to take over that company when it was losing three million dollars a month and within two years, we were making a million dollars a month, right? Um, the last time I know, like about a few years ago, they were up to $9 million a month they were making. So what, what inspired me also was seeing the change in the people that work for us, seeing them develop. That always motivates me, you know? So there's always something new. I'm, I'm always inspired by something. When, I, when I'm retired and finished working i'll go ride my bicycle and uh, you, actually, you actually just led me to my because we're winding down so this is my penultimate yeah. question and yeah. um, for you health and wellness is is critical so how do you create that balance and why is that balance so important even as you focus on your career and your personal development that also ensure your health is in check because i've realized a long time ago and i've seen it in people that a, people, a lot of people spend all their lives acquiring wealth. And when they acquire the wealth, there's no health. That right? Is so true. Yeah. And a lot of people spend a lot of their time pleasing a lot of people who are not important. And when it's time for them to go home, right, they can't enjoy the time because they spend time pleasing the wrong people. So you have to create that balance. So how do you create it? I basically have every single thing in a 24 hour calendar. So just like how you have a calendar that schedules what you do at work, I schedule everything, right? I schedule my exercise time. I schedule my sleep time, right? If you call me certain times, you're not gonna get me. I guarantee you that, right? So I schedule everything, right? And I mean, you must at the same time, even though you schedule it, because I, I can speak for myself, unfortunately. I've had times where I schedule things in and I'm not always consistent with everything. So how do you have that consistency, especially when it comes on to some areas that we might think is not as important like the exercise when it really is? Well, exercise is critical for me and that's it. You just, it's just how you elevate it. For me, it's critical. It's a way of life you know so i have to get my cycling in right and it, once you start doing things after like three months it becomes a habit and then what you do also is you surround yourself with people who think like you and do the things you want to do if you surround yourself with people who are you know you say okay i'm going to stop smoking and then all your friends are smoking eventually guess what you're going to start smoking again you know, so you surround yourself with an environment that enables you to go where you want to go. And that's what you have to do. And, and you know, you, you have to have someone that when you're falling off, they can be brutally honest to you and say, hey, you're falling off. You need to get back. Somebody who is accountable. Yeah. An accountability partner then. Yeah, I, yeah. I actually agree with that, that. In order to move forward, you know, to get where you want to go, as you rightly mentioned, you have to be in that right surrounding. 
Okay, so my last question for you, Dennis, we normally like to ask our trailblazers, especially when we are wrapping up, to just share with us their rules or their tips for success. So I know it varies, but I don't know what you would want to share to our trailblazers or, or aspiring trailblazers as to what they can do to become a success in their life holistically and just moving forward. Yeah, um, I would say one of the most important things, maintain your integrity right? Always do the right thing. Irrespective, and my mother used to always tell me, you know, irrespective of what the consequence is going to be, always do the right thing because in the long run, it will always work out, right? Um, secondly, you have to be, you have to be thoughtful, you know, don't let your heart rule your head. You know, when you're doing whatever it is, um, investments, um, the people you talk to, you know, your heart can't rule your head. You, ha you have to be conscious and thoughtful about what you're doing. And be, be patient, eh? Um, so when, 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 you, when you're moving towards doing something, right, uh, whether it be investment or a business, be patient. You know, think about it carefully. You know, once your plan is, is properly thought out, just be patient and execute, right? And, you know, I guarantee that once you do all of that and put all the ingredients together, then you'll be successful. However you define success, because money is not success, eh? Success is happiness. All right, so thank you so much, uh, Dennis. This has been a very thought-provoking and at the same time relaxed interview. And no doubt we are grateful for your tips, for your advice, and we'll be able to implement them moving forward. So continue to keep up the amazing work that you're doing in your different sectors and industries, and just continue to blaze your trail. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot, Tamara. Thank you. Thank you. Hey everyone, I am Tamara McHale, television presenter and communication specialist and of course producer and host of the Trailblazers series. I'm inviting you to join the Trailblazers family. All you have to do is just click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you can be alerted for weekly episodes and then just join us for weekly inspirational and edifying episodes that not only will lift your spirits but will give you the tools that you can be able to blaze your trail.